this is Vicki Robinson of Vicki Robinson Designs and today I wanted to show you how you could take a 12 by 12 digital scrapbooking paper and resize it to fit a US letter or an A4 sized paper. Many designers provide all three sizes in their kits but if they don't and you prefer to work in an A4 size you may have questions about how you'd actually use that paper and not lose most of the design of the paper. So let me show you how I would go about doing that. Now this in this particular paper right here, it's really not going to matter, right? Because there's no specific design on one side or the other that causes any problems. I've opened up an A4 document over here. And let me just go ahead and drag this paper on top of this one so you can see what I mean. It really doesn't matter where you place this paper. It's just sort of a generic pattern. There's nothing really repeating about it that will cause the paper to look strange when you go to use it. So this kind of paper, obviously a solid paper, it really doesn't make any difference. Let's go ahead and delete this one. But the question might be, what happens if you wanted to use say a paper like this. This is one of my Autumn Breeze papers. There is a very obviously sort of a spiral bound notebook side to this page over here and then on the right hand side you see there's some botanical graphic and how in the world will you get that that both to show let me just drag this one over here on top of that paper if you hold down the shift key when you're dragging and dropping a layer the layer will land right in the middle of uh, your document and this is what you would look like if you just chose to do this in the middle. So you actually do have an option of making a paper that looks just like that. Let me go ahead and clip this down for you so you see. Okay, so you could actually do that, but you do lose what's on the left hand side. Let's do move this over so you can see control or command T and I'll move it over here. And as you can see the uh, a4 size is just a little bit taller than the, a 12 by 12 document. So I want to make this fit completely into my document with having chosen uh, Control or Command T from my shortcuts. I'm going to click and then drag inwards on that double headed arrow and that's going to resize in downward just a little bit so my entire page fits in there. So you see I've got that one side but I've also got this great side over here. So you might be tempted to just choose one of these sides and that would be okay. But if you really wanted to try to incorporate both sides into your paper, this is what I would do. I've got my first copy of my paper here. I'm gonna control or command J with that layer selected. So I make a duplicate of this layer, control or command J. Oops. Got to do my little checkbox here. Now I've got a duplicate. And you know, for demonstration purposes, let me unclip these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top copy and I'm going to pull it all the way over so the right side is what's showing on my paper and fit this in. So now my top paper is showing the right side of my page and the bottom paper is showing the left side of now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask to the top layer. And the other thing I'm going to do before I go further is I'm going to reduce the opacity of this top layer so that you can see what I'm talking about. So with the reduced opacity, you can see there's my sort of notebook spiral bound on this side and I'm showing the botanical here on the right. So I've added a layer mask to the top layer. I'm going to come over to my marquee tool, uh, rectangular marquee. That's You'll find that in your selection tools um, here on the right, the top one on the right column. If that is not what's showing, if you've got your elliptical marquee, you can just click down here on the tools bar, the options here to get the rectangular marquee. I'm doing this in Photoshop Elements. Uh, 2018 but the steps are the same in the full version of Photoshop and you should be able to do this same technique in any version of Photoshop elements down to uh, I think it was elements 9 or 10 where they introduced layer mask so as long as you can add a layer mask to your layer you can do this in Photoshop elements or the full version of Photoshop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and I'm just going to go about halfway click and drag 
and I'm going to tr click and drag since I am currently my top layer is currently hiding the left side of the page I'm going to click and drag until I've selected the entire left side of the top layer I'm going to click on my layer mask to make sure it's active you notice I got a little outline around it and I'm going to come up to edit fill selection and from this in this dialog box I'm going to make sure that I'm using black that my blend mode is normal opacity 100 percent and preserve transparency is not checked and then I'm going to say OK and you'll see that elements has filled in this layer mask in the area that I've selected with black and what do we know about layer masks and black and white white conceals so when the layer mask was all white it was completely concealing the layer below black reveals so when we filled this area of the layer mask with black it is revealing what's on the layer below I'm going to control or command D to deselect and get rid of my marching ants and let's put this opacity back up to 100% so we can see how that looks. To me it looks pretty good. The only thing I notice, and you probably too, too, is that there's this kind of clear vertical line going down on the paper. And we're not going to be able to fix that completely, but let me show you what I would do to try to fix that a little bit. Again, making sure that my layer mask is selected, I'm going to choose my brush tool, B for brush on the keyboard, and from the default brushes, I'm going to choose a soft round brush. This is 300 pixels, and that's probably right. Might make that a little bit smaller. And the other thing I want to do is I want to, it's going to come in at 100% opacity, unless you've changed it previously. I'm going to go ahead and reduce that a little bit, because what I'm going to try to do is use this brush to blend away by painting in black on this mask I'm going to try to blend away and fool the eye into thinking that there's no line there so let me show you what I mean I'm just going to stroke like this over the line and I'm doing it quite gingerly make my brush a little bit smaller because I just want that line to be not quite so obvious and maybe I can increase my opacity just a little bit more maybe we go to 50 50 here and what's happening is I'm softening the edges of this black layer mask by adding some soft edges with my soft round brush so and I'll even try going here in a circle that actually even works better because then there's no definite line you see what I'm doing just gonna drawing little circles with my mouse all the way down here so I actually think this looks pretty good. Um, here was the original paper without that side, and then here it is with this side. So there are going to be times when you can't do it perfectly, but for the most part you can come up with something where you haven't lost the main idea of the paper. Let's try another one here. Let's try this Autumn Breeze one. This will actually be a little bit easier because there's already pretty empty in the middle here. I'm going to click and drag this over my A4 paper. Hold down the key, uh, shift key, I centered it. So I'm going to click and drag here. And when I get my controller command T transform handles again, you see that it's a little not quite fitting in and I want the whole paper. So clicking and dragging when I get the double headed diagonal arrow, clicking and dragging in, the paper will fit and dragging it over here, saying OK. Now Controller Command J to duplicate the layer, and this time I'm going to click and drag with my uh, Control uh, Transform handles and drag it so I see the right side of the page. Once again, I'm going to um, lower the opacity, and that's really just so you can see what you're working with. Actually, this is kind of goes together pretty well. I don't think I'm losing very much at all by doing this. So remember, the next step is to add a layer mask and then come up to your rectangular marquee tool and then click and drag remember it's the bottom paper I'm hiding and it's so it's that left side I don't want to show when I got my papers combined so let me just go ahead and go maybe right about here click and drag making sure that your layer mask is still selected edit fill selection and it will remember your last settings fill with black mode is normal opacity 100% and don't check preserve transparency and say okay 
So now Control or Command D to deselect, and let's see if I need to do any work. You know, because of this paper, I don't feel like I need to do any blending here at all. I don't see anything in particular that gives me an overlap. Maybe, let's look at this. Maybe there was something. Nope, I really don't see anything. Let's see what would happen if we went ahead and chose the brush key anyway. And remember, I'm a soft round brush. I'm down at about 40% here, and I'm just going to go make some light circles around here. So you see maybe it carried these little dots in a little bit more, but really I think that re worked really well for this. Oh, you know what? Let's turn the opacity back to 100%. Uh, so you can see. So as far as I'm concerned, that looks really good to me. At this point, I would right mouse click on the top player and say merge down. Um, and we would be done with that one. So let's try one more. Let's try this one, which is a little bit more complicated. It looks like it might be. Click and drag it over here on top of my A4 document. And now I'm going to move the left corner into place. Let's hide this one down below. You can see that I still need to resize a little bit in. Drag, click and drag in. That looks good. Control or Command J to duplicate the layer. And then move this side in. Let's reduce the opacity so we see what we've got to work with here. Well, this is going to be a little trickier because I can see there's words up here at the top. So let's just go ahead and do our let's do our little thing here. Let's uh, add the layer mask, and then come to the rectangular marquee tool and click and drag. From here to the left, I can see a couple problems with this already. Let's see if you see them one more. See if I'm right. Now come up and edit fill selection with black. Control or Command D to deselect. And let's put this opacity all the way back up to 100%. So obviously, oops, 100%. Obviously, there's a couple of problems here. There's a little disconnect, and maybe we won't be able to make this one look perfect after all, but let's just see what we can do. I'm going to choose the B key to get my brush tool back. It's at 150 size. I'm going to leave it 100, a little bit bigger. Leave the opacity here, and let's see what we, happens when we start to play. Remember, we're going to paint with black on this mask to soften the edges of it a little bit. So the important part there is to get that go with the flow. So I can actually can get that to come back okay. And I see a little bit of a difference here because this paper on this side is a little bluer and it here was a little bit whiter. So I'm gonna make my brush bigger so that I'm covering a wider area and I'm just gonna do those little sort of circling motions to try to blend it just a tiny bit. See how it's still, you can see over here on the mask, it really is not a lot, but it made a difference to me. I can see that they're just a little bit blended. I'm going to make that brush a tiny bit smaller. I'm using my left and right bracket keys to do this. Because now what I've got to try to do is see if I can't fix this a little bit. And this might be more of a challenge than we bargained for. So I'm just going to start making these little sort of circular motions here so that I'm not making a line to see if I can get some more of this circle to show up. and see what I can do about that. Okay, perfect, no, but if you didn't know that this paper didn't come this way, I don't think there's any any reason it would jump out at you that this was two blended papers together. So I hope this helps you understand one way you might take a 12 by 12 digital scrapbooking paper and then alter it to fit either an eight and a half by 11 U.S. letter size or an A4 European size paper. Thanks for watching.